Hello, I'm going to be recording for the Parshas of Zota Bracha, which is the last Parsha of the Book of Devarim. And then I'm going to have to do it again, do Bershi. And hopefully this week I will get up to Parshas Noach. So uh, I'm going to go a little bit quicker, quickly, and see how it goes. This is the first Aliyah from Zota Bracha, which is the last Parsha of the Book of Devarim, the last Parsha of the Five Books of Moses. It's Deuteronomy chapter 13, Aliyah Rishon, the first Aliyah, verse 1, verse Aleph. And this is a blessing with, with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the throne of Israel just before his death. Now remember, Devarim started out that they, this is like all the Devarim is Moshe Rabbeinu's could you say last will and testament because it's like right before he dies, this whole book is written from this perspective of him of him speaking just before he's going to be uh, before he passes away. He said, meaning Moses, the Lord came from Sinai and shone forth from Seir to them, Seir. He appeared from Mount Paran and came with some of the holy myriads. From his right hand was a fiery law for them. Uh, God doesn't have a hand. This is this is Moses speaking of a. Of, I mean, of course, it's God's God spoke. God, Moses' prophecy was directly from God, but this seems to have an element of of uh, you know emotion or or or, or um, personal imagination because. You know, if you read the rest of the Torah, which is Moses is recounting the rest of the Torah as God gave it to him, it's not written like this. It's not as poetic or with so much uh, metaphors or imagery as these uh, last, you know, what you might, what you find in the book of Devarim. And here we go. So God doesn't have a right arm, a right hand or any body part. Indeed, you showed love for, for peoples. All his holy ones are in your hand. For they let themselves be centered at your feet, bearing your utterances. Okay, God doesn't have feet either. Verse 4. The Torah that Moses commanded us is a legacy for the congregation of Jacob. He and he was a king in Yusharon. Where whenever the sum total of the people were gathered and the tribes of Israel were together. So Moses is kind of like a king, but why is Moses talking about himself in the third person? You know, in verse uh, 4 and 5. May Reuven live and not die. May his people be counted, counted in the number. May also this also be for Yehuda. And he, Moses, said, O Lord, hearken to Yehuda's voice and bring him to his people. May his hands do battle for him and may he be a help against his adversaries. Well, Yehuda is not you know, alive anymore. So we're talking about the tribe of Yehuda, like his descendants. Because Reuven was really the firstborn, but then he lost the firstborn. And then the kingship which I guess was theoretically supposed to also come out of Reuven, the tribe of Reuven, but didn't, eventually came out of the tribe of Yehuda. So that's why these two are mentioned here, because, you know, Reuven's the first one. Now, now Yehuda's not the second born after, after Reuven, after Reuven. Yehuda is the first born of Rachel. No, is that right? No, that's not right. Reuven is the fourth child born to Leah, I apologize. And that's from Yehuda is eventually King David comes from Yehuda. All right, so really that ends the first Aliyah, and uh, I'm not going to get too much into this because uh, that's really you know beyond the scope of these uh, videos. But I'll try to get onto the second Aliyah.